Hi friends and welcome to Noonday Prayer with Church of the Ascension on March 31st, 2020. If you're following along at home, Noonday Prayer is on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer or you can follow at BCP online and then click on Daily Office and then the Order of Service for Noonday. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. Our reading today from the Daily Office Lectionary is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9. Jesus said, If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Here ends the reading. So just to comment on this reading today, um, this is one of those hard sayings of Jesus, of which there are a number. Um, most scholars think that uh, these difficult verses that Jesus uh, sometimes says about um, it's better to be maimed than to have, and to have two hands and to go into hell and so forth are hyperbole that Jesus was exaggerating to get his point across. Um, there are some interesting points, though. The word stumble or stumbling block is from a Greek word, uh, scandalon, where we get our word scandal. So if you uh, use the word uh, scandal in place of stumble, then you would get things like, uh, if your hand causes you to be a scandal, and so forth if your feet causes you to be a scandal. And uh, the idea here is that um, uh, it is a scandal to cause other people to move further away from God. Um, we do that with our hands sometimes. We do that with our feet in the places we go. We do that with our eyes. Um, the point is, is that we are to live uh, for others. We are to think about others in the way that we live 
And so don't do things that would cause them or ourselves to be a scandal to the gospel of Christ. Um, this is one of those places where it's really important not to take uh, scripture literally, but to remember that um, ultimately uh, we are uh, seeking to enter the kingdom of God. And we do that by not being a scandal to others and by not causing others to be a scandal. Um, so uh, little pieces of scripture like this to me are actually in their own way somewhat beautiful because they are calling us to live lives that think about other people um, and think about the kingdom of God. Amen. Continuing on page 106 with the prayers. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This week in our prayers, we remember Sister Anna Kathleen, Bob and Laura Barnes, Avery Browning, Jerry Buck, Amy Caponetti, Carol, Suzanne Elliott, Terrell Fielden, Anna Frazier, Carlton Fuller, Melissa Gill, Doug Good, Sally Gray, Ann Hansen, Christy Harper, Linda Hauser, Jimmy Hunter, the Jenkins family, Keith Kelly, Sam McNutt, Anita Medlock, Chris Panel, Demi Perez, Sam Swan, Kathy Schuchman, Mark and Jan Vinci. We also pray for Lida Barrett, Paul Bergeron, Michael Brenner, Charles Garys, Becky Hare, the Nelson family, Ned and Beth Patterson, Sue Ellen Rayle, and Melanie Staten. We also pray for Steve Geisman, grandfather of Olivia Johnson, who died last week. We also pray for all of those healthcare workers who are taking care of so many people and living heroic lives in this time. We pray for all of our parishioners and all people in our community who are sick or sad or lonely or afraid. We pray that you would give them your peace and comfort. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the general thanksgiving, which is found on page 836. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence upon you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, 
may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you all.